Hi, I'm Rob Murphy, uh, Head of Financials at Edison Group in London, and I'm delighted today to be um, invited to speak with Vasilios Psaltis, CEO of Alpha Bank here in Athens. Rob, thank you very much. It's excellent having the opportunity to speak. So let's start with the very basic stuff, as our audience is maybe not that familiar with Alpha Bank. Who are you and what makes you different? Well, Alpha Bank is a universal bank. Um, we are among the four systemic banks uh, in the country. In terms of the key figures, um, we have uh, a balance sheet of about 75 billion in assets. We have 40 billion in loans and a bit more of 50 billion in deposits. Um, we have a tangible equity value, uh, a bit uh, more of 6.2 billion. And uh, nowadays, our market capitalization is around the 3.6 billion marks. For 2023, the market is expecting us to deliver more than 700 million in terms of profit. As a bank, we have a unique history of 140 years. Uh, we are the oldest privately owned uh, Greek bank, and uh, we have been the only listed company in the Athens Stock Exchange, whereby since the Second World War and in the onset of the Greek crisis, we have been able to pay uninterruptedly a dividend. And um, on top, I would also say that we are the bank that got the least state aid uh, during the crisis. Now, as the trusted relationship bank in Greece, our customers see us as a reliable, resilient, and humane partner. We are the leading bank in trusted advice, in expertise and professionalism, and this does get reflected in our market share that we're having in the customer satisfaction scores, but also in the long tenure uh, of our client relationship. We do consider as our mission to create superior value for our shareholders and empower our customers for growth. And I would say we have a solid track record on this. We are the market leader in wholesale. Uh, we are the bank of choice in terms of affluent. And uh, our strong customer relationship and partnerships, this is what fuels our growth. We're fortunate to operate in a good macroeconomic context, and in particular in the current juncture, where there is political and economic positive dynamics for Greece. We have also an ambitious plan for the next three years, aiming to grow our earnings by 20% uh, per annum, and this uh, should deliver a tangible equity, uh, a return on our tangible equity uh, north of 12% by the year 2025. Throughout this three-year journey, we're expected to generate shy of 2.3 billion in terms of capital. That's a very useful uh, background. You mentioned the macroeconomic context, which from the outside looks pretty favorable, as you've indicated. What are your thoughts on the outlook and how does that affect your plans? Well, the Greek economy has indeed been remarkably resilient uh, over the very recent years in the sense that we have been able to accommodate two consecutive crises and come out strong. This is on the back of a program of uh, structural reforms and the ongoing transformation that as a country we're going through has been significantly accelerated by some strong inflow of EU funds that allow Greece to capture the opportunity not just to revitalize the economy, but also to change its productive model towards uh, an investment-led growth model. Um, this has been coupled with quite robust public finances as evidenced by the decrease by 18 percentage points of debt to GDP ratio, uh, but also improving business and uh, investor confidence. Greece has been, as we have seen lately in ratings, uh, being able to get catapulted by 16 positions in the ranking. That's, that's quite impressive. And alongside all this, I would say we have witnessed uh, uh, the most significant transformation in the banking sector that uh, we can recall in history. Therefore, the significantly improving debt dynamics, the significantly improving investor confidence, as well as also with a strong banking system and political stability, all these factors have contributed towards Greece gaining back the investment grade in 2023. The strong fundamentals uh, drive banking demand also in the market, uh, the improvement in employment, the improvement in disposable income, but also the combination of the two, which has driven savings higher, while the real estate market uh, being resilient, these are all very conducive to uh, the increase of, uh, of banking demand. Over and above, I would say also that digital awareness is significantly increasing, which allows for digitization uh, of banking services, but also foreign direct investments have been significantly uh, keeping pace. We're talking about since 2019 experiencing an on average 17% growth per annum. On top of that, I would say also that competitiveness is increasing uh, in Greece and that has allowed for exports to outpacing GDP. 
So if we are to look at uh, next year, for example, GDP is expected to grow by 2.5% uh, to 3%, and that is definitely faster than the European average, which has been also the case in the preceding years. Um, we do also expect that unemployment will drop towards 10% or even lower, and disposable incomes and house prices grow between 3 and 4%. The growth that we are seeing uh, is driven by these structural trends that affect profoundly the demand for banking services. And there is more pronounced in segments where we are very strongly presented. And this is the area of business banking and the area of investments uh, for individuals. Uh, thus, we do believe that by this uniquely position that uh, we do have, we're going to be able to capture these trends uh, and have a significant improvement uh, in our numbers as well. So what are those strategic priorities uh, and how to position or reposition the organisation to take advantage of the growth opportunity in Greece? Well, the priorities have been evolving, as you would appreciate. Over the crisis years, the priorities were definitely there in order to go through a deep restructuring, uh, ensuring that uh, our balance sheet uh, um, would be still intact as we were restructuring the bank. Um, we focused on restoring, and from that point onwards, we focused on um, fixing, after fixing the fundamentals of our operating model, which led to more cost rationalization and the normalization uh, of the cost of risk, then we realized that balance sheet has shrunk and that actually changed the focus on our side towards increasing the top line. And this is where all of our focus has been put in. And the outcome of that is actually that we have been able for example, uh, for the target that we had uh, for profitability this year at 10% to outpace it. So that, um, that has been quite an important element. On our side now, we do aim to deliver, uh, on the one hand, a return on tangible equity north of 12% uh, by 2025. Uh, we do want to have uh, an EPS growth of 20%, and uh, we're looking forward to generate about 2.3 billion of capital, uh, which would allow us uh, also to start giving out dividends, starting with this year for the profitability of 2023, and that's obviously something that we will need first to conclude the dialogue with uh, a regulator. Now, to accomplish all that, uh, we have uh, set to ourselves six strategic priorities that form, if you would want, our operational levers that we're using, uh, not just for the financial ambition, but also to swiftly improve the structure of profitability on each and every business unit. Therefore, for retail, the focus is in order, to, the focus is to make sure that all the everyday banking activities will get digitalized and through this way, we will be able to allow for our staff to get uh, more time available for other commercial activities uh, away from pedantic uh, issues uh, of uh, back office and middle office. Uh, then in the area of wealth, uh, we're looking towards addressing a wider audience, uh, which means that we need to scale up um, our uh, wealth engine and we need also to customize our offering so that we improve our uh, investment penetration in those audiences. In wholesale banking, uh, where we have the leadership there, where we want to achieve is to capture all possible opportunity that the growth of Greece allows us uh, to have while maintaining a very strong focus um, on profitability. And in addition, I would also say that uh, in the area of international, we look to uh, deploy our capital in a way that constantly the return on that capital improves. So all along, uh, we are ensuring uh, the resilience of our balance sheet, pricing prudently, um, our diversified performing book, reducing the problematic assets that we're having, and maintaining strong level of liquidity. And finally, we're using also sustainability as a value-creating lever. Um, this plan is enabled by our investments, both to people and digital. That sounds like uh, an attractive ambition. Uh, is everything going to plan so far? And... We're all living in a difficult economic times now with inflation and interest rates. Have you felt the need to adjust uh, any of your plans? Well, we have come out uh, with our plan fairly recently. That was just in June uh, 2023. Uh, and um, this is uh, something also that I would urge our esteemed audience also to have a look at. We believe that um, it was uh, quite an effort uh, to really get the bank uh, out there to people to get to know it. Now, ever since, I would say, as far as the structural trends is concerned, there is not much that has changed, albeit uh, there are some uh, shifts in the more short-term cyclical trends. And uh, practically, 
uh, what uh, we are preparing now is uh, for uh, higher rates uh, for a longer period. Now, clearly for us as a bank uh, that has a strong retail deposit base, we will come to benefit uh, out of that. And that's why we are trying to adjust our balance sheet accordingly. We recently also posted uh, a strong nine-month uh, set of results. Uh, our profitability um, has been growing by more than 12% uh, with well over half a billion uh, of normalized earnings. Revenues have been growing close to 20% year on year, driven by higher rates, but also higher volumes in terms of bonds, in terms of loans, but also higher recurring fees. Uh, operating leverage and strict cost control has allowed for our cost to income to drop significantly towards the low 40s. Asset quality, as a last point uh, in those results, I would say that it proved that it remains relatively benign and that um, uh, meant that our cost of risk is now largely normalized. Now, as a result, uh, we have generated 24 cents uh, per share, which is almost double towards the performance, uh, bottom line performance that uh, we had uh, last year. And if one is to summarize, this improvement comes uh, mostly from two sources. Um, on the one hand, we are seeing a structural improvement in, every sing in the profitability of every single business unit that we have as the levers that we're looking towards operationalizing, operationalizing combine nicely with uh, the macro tailwinds, and that gives us this uh, significant improvement and the sustainability in the high returns. And secondly, we ensure that we allocate our capital in a very disciplined and accretive way. With uh, the latest quarter results, uh, we have continued to demonstrate that we are making good work in meeting our financial targets, increasing profitability, generating more capital in order to support both our growth and create value for our shareholders. That's great. So maybe to switch gears a little bit, you recently announced a deal with Unicredit uh, of Italy. Um, can you walk us through the main components of the deal and how it fits in with your strategy? Well, indeed, uh, in the 23rd of October this year, we announced uh, what we feel is a groundbreaking uh, agreement with Unicredit that practically engulfs uh, three distinct components. The first is that we have agreed to merge our subsidiaries uh, in Romania in order to create the third largest bank uh, in the country and the second largest in terms of corporate banking. Out of that deal, Alpha Bank will be able to get 300 million in cash and also retain 9.9% in the combined entity. Uh, secondly, uh, we are forming uh, a commercial partnership in asset management, in bank assurance and in other banking services. Unicredit uh, in that uh, vein will acquire 51% of our bank assurance um, company in the area of life uh, and uh, this is called Alpha Life. And additionally, we, on the other hand, we're going to be distributing uh, Unicredit's mutual funds. Uh, as a final point on this complex, we are agreeing with Unicredit a cross-border referral system uh, for our clients. And thirdly, to underpin the strategic nature um, of this uh, partnership, Unicredit has bought already a 9% stake in our bank uh, from the Hellenic Financial Stability Fund, which has been the vehicle through which uh, state aid has come uh, into the bank. That uh, was the last mile for the full privatization of the bank, and we are very happy uh, that uh, this has taken place. Now, if one looks at the various facets of this transaction, they're all fully aligned with our strategic objectives. The transaction, on the one hand, vastly improves the return on the capital that we have employed internationally. The merger will unlock the profitability benefits of having critical scale in a country that definitely needs size in order to operate profitably. And we can retain um, our presence uh, in a capital efficient way, allowing us to enjoy the uplift in value uh, from the synergies whilst participating in the favorable growth outlook of the country. Um, the transaction has allowed us to, whilst limiting the risk uh, from the investment that would have required otherwise. So that is an additional uh, benefit that we get. Now, the commercial partnership uh, we have formed with Unicredit is equally uh, important. It is a real differentiator for Alpha Bank, as now with that move, we will cement uh, our stronghold in the corporate landscape because every single Greek corporate that would want to operate abroad uh, practically would be the first call that they would make as we want to be able to service them in 13 different countries that Unicredit has a presence. 
On top of that, uh, through this partnership, we will enrich uh, our product range that we can offer to our affluent customers, whilst also bringing expertise that will de-risk our effort to expand into the emerging affluent class, so one tick underneath. And finally, it makes us part of a pan-European network um, that improves our negotiating power vis-a-vis -vis our counterparties and that elevates, obviously, our access to various European geographies as well as also to leading expertise that uh, the Unicredit Group has. Now, these transactions, they're going to be having a positive financial impact for us compared to the 2025 targets that we have released in our Investor Day uh, in June. Overall, this transaction leaves net earnings intact because on the one hand, we will indeed lose the PNL contribution that we had our Romanian subsidiary. But on the other hand, firstly, we will have our almost 10% participation in a much bigger company that will make almost half uh, of the revenue. And on the other hand, we'll have reduced funding cost, but also we will be able to reinvest these 300 million proceeds that we're having. So we will come square. At the same time, um, we will be further enhancing our capital ratio. This is because we're going to be deconsolidating the risk-weighted assets of Romania, so that will give us uh, another 100 basis points in terms of capital. So same profit, reduced capital density, that means that our profitability ratios will go up by 50 basis points uh, through that. And uh, I would say also a final point, which is important to consider, is that these estimates do not include the potential upset that upside that we will have from the commercial agreements. Well, that's a fantastic uh, summary uh, of your very comprehensive uh, plans and uh, outlook of the bank. I'd like to thank uh, Vasilios for, for speaking with us today. Well, thank you very much.